Hello and welcome everybody. Today we are talking about NAS, about this Western Digital Sentinel DX4000. And it has a Windows Server 2008 R2 on it and that was kind of a problem I had with this device because I want to connect it with, to Windows 10 which is running on all of my PCs and laptops and therefore it doesn't quite work out for me. I have tried it with Windows 7 but I don't get it. So therefore I thought about installing Open Media Vault on this device and it works out quite well and in this video series I will give you step by step the way how to install Open Media Vault on this Western Digital Sentinel DX4000. So first we will uh, have a look at the device itself, afterwards we will have a look at the BIOS, its settings, then we will um, see the installation of Debian and of Open Media Vault afterwards and lastly we have a look at Open Media Vault in the browser and how to configure it so that we can use it as our NAS in our network at home. So let's get started. At the front we have the power button, we have some wiggle up and down buttons, we have a display, we have some indications for our hard drives, one to four, and behind the front door you can see four base for the hard drives. You can open them and put a hard drive in for example and then close it up again. We will see that later. At the back we have two power input sockets, so one for a backup and one for normal use. If you want an uninterrupted power supply then you can use them. We have two USB 3 ports and two gigabit ethernet ports. And as we have no display, it would be a challenge to install um, Debian right blind. But there is a way that you can have some kind of display. This device has a serial monitor output and also the BIOS can be addressed and uh, seen via this uh, serial port. And to make a connection to this port you have to unscrew the screws at the back. So now you can open it, just slide it a bit backwards and then pull it apart. So here you can see the main board of our NAS from above. Um, this port right here, I think it might be an LBDS port. Um, so maybe a display out. Another interesting port is this one, J11 but I don't know what that is for. Here at the front we have the cable for the button and the display at the front and a bit below that I've already soldered some wires to this mainboard because this is a serial output. We can use that for um, display out kind of. The left one is VCC at 3.3 volts then we have receive, then transmit, and on the right side we have ground. So for hardware you have to use a USB keyboard to enter the BIOS via the delete key. Then you have to have a USB thumb drive with your operating system Debian. Uh, this should be at least one gigabyte. Then you have a USB hub. This is connected to one port of the NAS. Um, you have another USB thumb drive for the operating system to install on. You have one 
power connector and your network cable. And at the front we have our USB to serial adapter connected to the serial port G23. So come in focus. So there you are. So with everything set up, you can start putty. Select your COM port for your adapter. Select the speed of 115200 and select open. Now you have a nice putty open and you can start this device. It says startup initialization and on your screen nothing there you go and when asked for delete key you can enter the bias and there you are so this concludes the first video um, about the hardware about the bios of this NAS and how to get into the bios to get it on the screen and uh, in the next video we will have a look deeper into the BIOS and into its settings and uh, yeah, until then, goodbye!